Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about stem cells. Stem cells are cells with potential to develop into many different types of cells in the body. They have the potential to become specialized cells. This can range from muscle cells to brain cells. In some cases, they can also fix damaged tissues. Researchers believe that stem cell-based therapy may one day be used to treat serious illnesses such as paralysis and Alzheimer's diseases. In this video, we will explain everything related to stem cells, what are they, how they are used in the treatment of many diseases, and the latest research regarding this medical technology. Our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding stem cells. Today, we have Dr. Saw, who is a leading doctor at Yonsei Sarang Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about stem cells from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Queenie, and before we start, please subscribe to our channel so next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Saw. Hello. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello. I am Dr. Seo, in charge of knee treatment at Yonsei Sarang Hospital. We are dealing with various diseases related to the knee, mainly stem cell cartilage regeneration, using an endoscope or artificial joint surgery. As long as our hospital's history, we've been successfully treating many patients. So we start with the first subject, which is adipose-derived stem cells. Mm. So Dr. So, we hear a lot about therapies with blood and uh, bone marrow stem cells. Mm -hmm. What is exactly adipose stem cells? Stem cells are everywhere in our body. Nowadays, treatment methods using stem cells are being developed one after another in various fields of medicine, not just orthopedic surgery. Stem cells require cells to be used for treatment. So there are several sources. However, the sources of stem cells that are commercialized and used for therapeutic purposes include blood, bone, marrow, and fat. However, the difference is where it comes from. Actually, stem cells are not necessarily found only in these three tissues. It is also in the liver, the heart, and the muscles. However, when collecting stem cells for therapeutic purposes, the tissue itself must not be damaged, so it is mainly collected from the tissues that can be refilled even if they are pulled out, or are harmless to the human body even if they are pulled out. In the case of stem cells from the blood or bone marrow, even if the stem cells are collected, they are regenerated as much as they are extracted, so they can be used as materials. In the case of fat, some people say that it is an essential to have fat, but for some people, it is better not to have it. There are exceptions if you are very skinny, but generally, there are people who have unnecessary fat, and there are many people who really want it. You can extract stem cells from there, but now the difference is that the stem cells are basically all the same. As immature cells, a common feature is that they can divide into various tissues. The biggest advantage and feature of fat is that it can collect a large amount of stem cells compared to blood or bone marrow, so a greater amount of stem cells can be obtained for treatment purposes. So you talked about the difference between both, uh, b between adipose stem cells and stem cells mm. using blood and bone marrow. So my next question is what diseases are treated using adipose stem cells? It overlaps with what I said earlier. But when you need to regenerate a certain tissue using stem cells, in fact, the more cells you have, the more therapeutic effects increase in proportion. Of course, not entirely, but it tends to be. To do this, you need to either amplify the amount of stem cells by culturing them or obtain a large amount of stem cells from scratch. Although it varies from country to country, in some developed countries where culturing is permitted, a small amount of stem cells are collected and cultured to increase the amount. But in our country, such culture is currently illegal. So we're using the method that uses a large amount of stem cells. So if you ask which has higher specific gravity and density of stem cells within the same volume of tissue, then the bone marrow is higher than the blood, and the fat is higher than the bone marrow. So in order to obtain a sufficient amount of stem cells conventionally and efficiently, we mainly use a method of extracting stem cells from fat for treatment. Okay. So where are these stem cells exactly extracted from for treatment? It may be a little unfamiliar, as it is the latest treatment like stem cells. But you've heard of liposuction, right? 
People do liposuction to change their body for beauty reasons. So fat can be extracted from anywhere, but it's extracted from places that do not necessarily need it. Usually, there are people who aren't satisfied with their body, such as having a big belly, or hips being too wide, or thighs too narrow. In fact, even if they want to extract it from certain places, we still try to extract it from places that don't necessarily need it. And since it must always be safely collected, and the amount must be large, fat is extracted from the buttocks, or thighs, most often. In some cases, people with a lot of abdominal fat often get fat from the belly. Mm. So, can donor Adipose cells can also be used? Actually, stem cells are not immune to rejection, even when using other people's stem cells. But that also depends on the law. Of course, theoretically, for example, a son can provide his own stem cells for regeneration of his mother's knee cartilage, but it is not possible because it's illegal. Theoretically, it can be used to regenerate cartilage in the same way without any problem scientifically. But since it has not yet been approved, there is currently no treatment such as transplanting stem cells obtained from a donor into a treatment target. But technically, it is possible. Mm. So, Dr. So, how do stem cells act on the cartilage tissue of the damaged joint? First, the conditions must be right. Putting stem cells in anyone who has arthritis or injured cartilage doesn't mean they will return to normal. And in fact, there are quite difficult conditions. The age group also has to be matched. And if there is a deformity in the legs, an O-shaped leg or an X-shaped leg, it may have to be corrected. And it's not just cartilage that makes up the joints in the knee. There are ligaments called cusate ligaments. And there are also soft cushion-like tissues called cartilage plates. However, up to now, the stem cells we mainly use for knee treatment are to regenerate cartilage, not other tissues. So under the condition that other tissues are in good condition, and the leg is not severely deformed, it is fine. If there is a deformation, the condition is altered while correcting the deformation. The damaged part of the cartilage is removed first, and the damaged part is cleaned up. And then, they are treated by transplanting or attaching stem cells in high concentrations. Cartilage can be regenerated with high probability after proper rehabilitation period after treatment according to the prescribed method and appropriately selecting and conditionally adjusted patients. Uh, so what are some contraindications for the stem cell treatment? There are several. First of all, if the cartilage damage, degenerative arthritis or any other cartilage spasm, which has reached the end of the stage, are so severe that the bones stick together on the x-ray. In fact, as with other body types, the probability decreases as the disease progresses to the early, middle and late stages. The same goes for stem cell therapy. So in fact, patients who have fully reached the terminal stage but are very healthy, very young, in these conditions. Exceptional cases can be made. But normally, terminally ill patients are not suitable targets because it is usually done for patients who have not reached the terminal stage. The treatment can be applied to diseases such as arthritis or cartilage damage, but those are not the only diseases that can occur in the joints. A typical example is rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory arthritis that affects the whole body. When there is such arthritis, even stem cells are administered to it. The treatment effect may be significantly reduced because the systematic inflammatory arthritis sweeping through the body also attacks stem cells. Of course, research is ongoing on whether stem cells will be effective in rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. But until now, it is considered as contradiction, so it is not applicable. Otherwise, relatively speaking, very old patients or young children who are still growing have a case of relative maladjustment in stem cells. So in this case, it is best not to do it. So apart from uh, or, uh, orthopedics, where else do we use stem cells treatment often? I'm uncertain about other places, but I'm sure several places do it and use for different occasions. In fact, cartilage regeneration in orthopedic surgery started rather late, introduced in Korea, and stem cell treatment was introduced a little early in plastic surgery. First of all, 
There are cases where it is regenerated for hair loss or skin beautification, or fat is transplanted. Many people transplant fat to correct their body shape, such as breast augmentation or butt augmentation, to increase the engraftment rate of fat. Stem cells are also transplanted together, and I know that there have been treatments that increase the success rate in that way for a long time. And for diseases that damage the heart muscle, such as myocardial infarction, stem cell therapy is actually a treatment that has been used since it was introduced a little early than cartilage regeneration. Now, as stem cells are developing more and more, the field of application is gradually expanding. I think there will be no choice but to have more in the future, and the application field expanding even more than what I have just mentioned. Mm. So in the case of this treatment, are there any complications after afterwards? In fact, it is rare that stem cell treatment itself has complications. Since there is no immune suppression response, even if someone else's stem cells are transplanted, the body does not reject them. And in the case of Adilogus adipose stem cells, which are mainly used in our hospital, the stem cells are originally their own. So there's no reason for bodies to react inappropriately when implanting it even if you think simply. So there are times when the treatment results are not visible 100%. But with proper patient selection, the success rate is over 80%. The most unfortunate case I can think of is when patients may not be completely satisfied over regeneration, not being 100% after treatment. But otherwise, it is very unlikely for anything bad to happen or the situation to get any worse because of it. In some cases, is it possible to preserve stem cells and mm -hmm. for how long? In fact, there is no set time limit, but it can be stored for 10 to 15 years. This technology for storing cells is being used for stem cells recently. But storing eggs frozen has been around for a long time. For whatever reason, whether it's to have a late child or you may want to have another child in the future. For such situations, since eggs are also cells, obstetrics and gynecology department have been doing it for a long time. In the same way, freezing cells at chirogenic temperatures and storing them for 10 to 15 years was possible in the past and is still possible today. Currently, it is usually stored for up to 15 years, but in fact, it is possible even more. Uh, for this kind of therapy, is it possible to repeat it many times? Yes, as long as there is a source of stem cells, it can be reached any number of times. We usually reserve at least 6 to 12 doses of stem cells in advance from the very beginning. So each treatment is stored in a vial. 6 to 12 vials are made, only one is used per treatment. So it is possible to repeat several times. And you may end up using them all because you have several joints that are uncomfortable. Then, if fat was extracted from the thigh in the past, and the fat there is lacking, then it can be extracted from the abdominum or from the bone marrow. So as long as there is a source, it can be repeated many times. Today we'll learn many things about this treatment and the doctor explained in details everything related to stem cell technology. Thank you for joining us today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll respond to you as soon as possible.